There we go. Yeah, this game is a bit finicky. But tabbing out. There we go. <laughs> hey, Edgard. Hey, Rudy. I really wanted to do this game and I love the career. Because it just... It, it forces you to work inside criteria that that you don't have with the free game because it's just you get a big field and you can do whatever you want and sometimes that just is too much and this so there are a lot of levels and a lot of stars to go through so the, welcome to part one here we go I, I skipped uh, a bit of loading so you don't have to wait I'm Bernard. Although Hi, Bernard. I insist, you call me Bernie. The only person who calls me Bernard is my wife. <laughs> and even then, only when I track elephant dung into the carpets. <laughs> As you know, I own several zoos, but I always like to show people the ropes here at my home. This is the first zoo I ever opened, and a source of great pride for me. And prides, thanks to a lion breeding program we ran in the 80s. But we're in the middle of a big renovation, and that's where you come in. Sadly, our old contractor had to retire after developing a fur allergy. Poor devil kept sneezing <laughs> his dentures into the lion habitat. So, it's up to you to finish everything off. Don't worry, though. I'm not completely throwing you into the deep end. My head keeper, Nancy Jones, will be lending a helping hand. Oh, she's a hard worker. And she'll expect you to be, too. But I'm sure you'll get along like a house on fire. Or even better, one that isn't on fire. <laughs> less shouting that way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bernie. You crack me up. So, Hello there. Ah, From there's Nancy. Fresh face of yours, I'm guessing you're Bernie's new hire. Good. Now, I hope you're ready to ditch your diploma because we're about to get really hands-on. Diploma? But uh -oh. before we begin the real work, how about we familiarize you with the zoo by learning how to fly around it and visiting some of our beautiful animals? We'll start by popping over and having a look-see at the grizzly bears in their habitat. Okay, just to get the hang of this again. Hello. Did you know that grizzly bears, also known as Ursus arctos horribilis, can hibernate for up to seven months a year? <laughs> oh, but then again, <laughs> given a chance, I think oh, a lot God. of people would do that too. <laughs> Select one of the bears and you'll bring up its information panel. Yay. I'm just... Skipping right through this See, tutorial this part. This is a fantastic way to get a close look at your animals. You can also get this <laughs> view of an animal by simply double clicking on it. Okay, next okay, find the lions. Ready? Let's pop over to the other side of the zoo and take a look at the lions. I've marked their location for you to find. Hello. Oh, look, they have a fake, <laughs> fake zebra. <laughs> Empty habitat. Okay. Mm. Panthera Leo Leo, or the West African lion to you and me. Lions are the most social of the big cats, and there can be as many as 40 lions in a pride. Although prides of that size are pretty <laughs> rare. There we go. As Bernie would say, those lions are awesome, which is precisely why I handle the training instead these days. <laughs> anyway, how about I love her. those objectives? Come on, let's head over to an empty habitat and see what needs doing there. Common warthogs, okay. We are going to stream. Uh, oh, oh, Nancy, do shut but up. It's missing a certain something. Well, two somethings. Warthogs. <laughs> so I'd like you to adopt a pair of them. To adopt animals, we need to open the animal market, which is in the animal trading section. We go. 
When you adopt an animal, it's automatically placed in the trade center where they're held until you're ready to move them into their habitat, which, as it happens, you are. So how about you move them into their new home? On it, Nancy. There they go. When you ask for an animal to be moved into a habitat, your caretakers will go to the trade center, <laughs> oh, collect heard. your animal, and deliver them to your selected habitat. I've marked the trade center's location, so let's go and watch the caretakers in action. Okay. No, I'm going to treat them right. I know there are a lot of people who like to make it horrible <laughs> as possible in these zoos, but I really don't like that. Let's see, she marked it on my map. Hold on, I can't see it. Uh, should have a building. Facilities. Staff. There we go. Oh, right, yeah, there it is. Well, as you can see, those caretakers don't hang about. They'll move those animals to their destination as fast as possible. Of course, normally we'd have to place the animals into quarantine before moving them into a habitat. But I am assured by a person of good standing that these warthogs are in the very rudest of health. <coughs> right, let's get the warthog's habitat finished up so we can keep them nice and happy. You see, each <laughs> animal in the zoo has an overall welfare statistic, basically how happy they are. And that overall welfare statistic is itself comprised of four different areas. Nutrition, social health, habitat, and enrichment. Luckily, if you select an animal, you'll bring up their animal welfare information panel, which we saw earlier, where you can see how they're doing. That way, you'll know exactly what areas need to be addressed. Don't worry if that's a lot to remember. You can always check the Zoopedia for more information. She's gonna shut up for a second? I think she just... No, oh, no! Here she comes again. Let's start by making sure we're taking care of the warthog's <laughs> nutrition welfare. To do this, we'll need to place a food station and a drinking station. Now, each animal requires a different type of feeding station. Where's and for the, the door? warthogs, it's a small there. feeding trough. So let's add one of those and a water bowl. You got it. Animals also require stimulation to keep them happy. Let's add a lovely mud bath for the warthogs to roll around in. <laughs> that bath will count towards their enrichment welfare, specifically their toy enrichment welfare. Get to work. <laughs> oh, nice work. Oh, Nancy. You've got a knack for this, I see. Now, our contractor had to leave in a hurry, so this place is in a feral state. Unfinished <laughs> thingamajigs and what's-its all over the shop. But the first thing we need to finish is the ostrich habitat. It's over near the hippos. Sure, let's do that. Okay, so Edgar is going to stream Planet Coaster. Yeah, I've had a lot of fun with Planet Coaster, but this game, for me, really tops it. Because it gives a lot more options. Let's see, she said it was near the hippos. Hop. Look at them puddling around. <coughs> there we go. Oh, before we actually start building our ostrich habitat, let's pause the game. Just click the pause button in the bottom right corner. Sure. Ah, that's more like it. A quick break. Sometimes it's a good idea to pause the game whilst you're doing something which requires your concentration, because it'll stop the zoo spinning out of control while you're looking the other way. Let's keep the game paused while we get this ostrich habitat built. Okay, job number one here is to add a habitat gate before we complete the barrier. Every habitat needs a habitat gate. After all, how else would the keepers get in and out? <laughs> Just make sure it's hooked up to the path so the keepers can reach it. There we go. 
It's just this part where she does a lot of Let's talking. Let's the perimeter barrier so we can adopt us some ostriches. I've marked out an area for you to use, so I'd like you to finish off the perimeter using the brick barrier. Uh, a bit a, let's keep it a bit of the same. Yeah, how short is this? Two? No, three. There we go. Get the oh, how oh well. Good work. Remember, before you can place animals in any habitat, it has to have a full loop of connected barrier. Now you've probably noticed that guests can't actually see into this habitat at the moment, at least not without a step ladder. But seeing as they're banned, I'd like you to select a piece of barrier and swap out the brick for a glass barrier so the guests can see in. Uh, where's the arrow? Hold on, I thought I turned off the music. Mute to music. Yeah. There. I like the music, but bit easier to talk. Let's see. Glass. There we go. Adding in more windows gives guests even more opportunities to see the animals in a habitat. It's always best to make sure the guests can get a good view into a habitat from the path they're walking on. Ah. Because it makes them happy. And because this would be a pretty terrible zoo if they couldn't. The last thing we need to do is to add a donation box. You see, when guests enjoy Money. the view of an animal, they'll make a donation. <laughs> Just make sure you put them in easy-to-reach places, like near a viewing point. Donation boxes are one of the main sources of income for the zoo, so make sure you remember them. Now, before we adopt our ostriches, you should click the play button. After all, if the game is paused, then so are our caretakers, which will make it a bit tricky for them to deliver the ostriches, eh? Yes, yes. Four ostriches. By the way, as well as pausing the game, you can speed the game up by clicking on the fast forward button. It'll run everything at two times and five times faster. It can be useful, especially if you're waiting for money to accumulate or for animals to be delivered to your habitat. Personally, I use it when I'm waiting for a brew to finish. All right, you've finished the habitat, so it's high time we adopted those ostriches, don't you think? Let's get four of them in here. Oh, it's a While train. While we wait for them to be collected by the caretakers and brought to the habitat, you should get it ready for them. Add a suitable feeding station, water station, and an appropriate food enrichment item. It's often best to place things like enrichments and feeding stations near to the habitat perimeter, so guests can get a really good view of the animals. How do you turn again? I don't remember how to turn items. This is really silly. Oh well. <laughs> I'll figure it out. Oh, good to see the ostriches have somewhere they can really stretch their legs. Did you know they can actually run? At 43 miles per hour? Oh, oh, heaven forbid they ever escape. <laughs> the speed camera finds alone would bankrupt us. <laughs> a keeper's hut. It's been a while. Well, I'll... Bernie certainly seems impressed. Did he do his speed camera joke? Every time we get an ostrich. <laughs> so, now we've made the ostriches' lives a bit better, let's do the same for the keepers, shall we? To make it easier for the keepers to feed the ostriches and hippos, we should build a new keeper hut. 
Aha. Keep our huts See. are where the keepers prepare the food for animals. So they should be placed near to the habitats to make sure the keepers don't waste their time walking when they should be looking after the animals. Yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, what else? Powered. Okay. This keeper hut only has space for one keeper. Oh. But the larger keeper hut can allow multiple keepers to prepare food at the same time. Oh, but bear in mind that keeper huts and other staff facilities shouldn't be placed near to areas where there are lots of guests. Guests don't like seeing facility buildings. Oh, I know, I know, I <laughs> know. Negatively. <laughs> In case that wasn't clear. Something that all facilities, shops, and a whole host of other objects need is power. And that obviously includes your newly built keeper hut. So let's place a transformer next to it, shall we? Oh, right, that, that was what it did, yeah. Thank Lovely you. work. Now the keepers can start using the hut to prepare food, and thanks to where you put it, they won't need to walk very far to deliver it to the ostriches and hippos. Let's get on to your next objective then. Bengal tigers. We want to adopt some, but I'm afraid there's nothing Wee. ready for them yet. Head on over to the plot of land I've marked out. It's not too far away. Yes, same here. Righty, your next job is to build a habitat from scratch. <laughs> and concrete and glass, I expect. So go ahead and build it. Just make sure the habitat includes that big hole we've dug. Oh, and uh -huh. don't forget to add a habitat gate to the barrier. Oh, and make sure the guests will be able to see the tigers. Yes, ma'am. Let's see. Create three climb proof fence needed. Let's see, grade six, grade two. Yeah, let's go. We'll go with the brick. I like brick. Bit more. Hey, Chase. <laughs> yeah, I love this game. I really wanted to buy the the DLC today, but unfortunately, Steve uh, steamed. Steve, forgive me. Uh, Steam didn't allow me to make use. How do you say of the of the packages without actually buying the game again? which is sad so they're basically full price and well I think almost 10 euros is a bit much for a couple of building items and a few animals you don't actually need to play the game so I'll wait for sale again eh. sorry I'm a bit finicky with these things <laughs> I want to get as much space as I can Oh. Up. Up, okay. Oh, okay, where are we placing the hut? Let's see. Oh, this is all. So this is a keeper's path. And this is probably... No, that's a transformer. So no cust uh, there are no people here. No viewers. Let's see, we need some glass. Oop. No, not all of it. Hold on. That's 
it's no fun. There. Glass. Can I add water? Yeah. Oh. This <laughs> is a bit much. <laughs> there. That's better. Mm, what else did I want? A gate, of course. Here. Now, Bernie takes safety very seriously at his zoos, so we should probably make sure those tigers can't jump out of their habitat, don't you think? The way we'll do it is by changing the height of the habitat's barrier. Okay then, you should start by double-clicking the habitat barrier, which will take you into barrier editing mode. Great. Now highlight the entire perimeter of the habitat. You can do that by clicking and dragging the barrier selection tool. Let's see, 371. Yeah. There we go. Now that the habitat is in place, don't forget to put down a donation box near to your viewing areas. We need every dollar we can get. Especially as these tigers aren't exactly eating instant noodles for lunch. <laughs> what? They don't? How dare they? No one tell Dane. Okay, that's the habitat boundary complete. The habitat no, I'm not done. Place, and most importantly, the tigers won't be able to jump out of it anymore. I think it's time we adopted those tigers. Up. Whilst our trusty caretakers collect and deliver the tigers, let's take a look at preparing the habitat for their arrival. We'll start with the basics. Add a suitable feeding station for them. Yes, that'll do nicely. Of course, just like the warthogs and ostriches, these tigers will also need some enrichment. Why don't you add some suitable toy and food enrichment items into their habitat? And a blood pumpkin. There we go. Okay, it's really starting to take shape. Now... The tigers will need a shelter in their habitat so they can hide from the guests, or more likely the bad weather. Although given that we're in England, you might want to think of that just as normal weather. <laughs> Go on, add a shelter to their habitat. You can either build one from various suitable bits and bobs, or if you like, just pop down the blueprint that I've already built hmm. for you. Let's see. I didn't want to block the path from the keeper. Oh, poor Dabs. I'm sure it can't have escaped your attention that the tigers look a bit miffed. That's really? because they aren't too keen on the type of terrain in their habitat. Oh, right. Select a tiger and bring up its information panel. Uh. Rightio. Click on the terrain tab, that way you can view the terrain information and see how they feel about the different types of terrain. That'll tell you what the tigers need more of or less of in this habitat. Well, they don't like these plants, so let's get rid of them. Asia, temperate grass and tropical. Mm. No, it was no nature. Ah, there we go.
tropical temperate and grass yes Asia no nothing at all hmm Okay, again. Open oh, wrong tab. Sorry. <laughs> painting and give them some more soil. Yes, that should help with the habitat part right. of their welfare. Hmm. Oh, that's a bit big. There. Let's see. A bit more soil here. And I need short grass. It's a bit hard to see, so I'm just painting until the long grass is gone. Right then, all yeah, animals there we go. plants and trees from their own biome or continent. You know, deserts, savannas, or Asia, Europe, that sort of thing. It looks like these tigers need a few more plants in their habitat. To get a perfect fit, use plants from the rainforest there we and go. temperate biomes that are native to Asia. Although if you have to, you can get away with using just one or the other. The tigers mm. will also want a certain amount of their habitat to be covered by those plants. To find out which plants to use and how many, select a tiger and go to the environment tab. Now. As you can see, some of the plants currently in the habitat aren't quite right for the tiger, like the wattle bushes. You can remove them if you want. I did. You can find all of the plants you need in the nature section, and you can use mm. the filters to only oh. show the types of plants you want to see. In this case, that's plants from the rainforest or temperate biomes. Let's see what gives a lot of coverage trees do oh here's a big tree there we go bananas Ain't there yet some bracken There we go. Mm -mm. They say that good fences make good neighbors. I guess that's doubly true when one of the neighbors is a Bengal tiger. <laughs> <laughs> Still, those tigers <laughs> look so happy that I doubt they'd leave. Even if you did poke a hole in their fence. <laughs> oh, but for heaven's sake, don't test that theory. Where's the... Oh. Right there. Blue. Now then, just find one of the peafowls and select them to open their information panel. Then we can have a good gander at how they're doing. Although technically, I suppose gandering would just be for geese. <laughs> oh. Whoever wrote the lines is just brilliant. What's wrong with the social? Expand their social welfare and we can get a Aha. bit more detail. That. Ah, uh, now they've clearly got plenty of space and they're not stressed, but it looks like their social group isn't quite right. So let's find out more. Click on the social tab at the top of their information panel to see what's wrong. Yeah, the tutorial is always a bit slow. It'll speed up when. As you can They're see, done the yappering on. Their population to be larger. To solve this little problem, you'll need to adopt three more female peafowls. Off you pop to the really? animal market then. Up. Uh, 
I do like you don't have to send them to quarantine though in this mission. I expect they'll be delivered soon. But sadly, it sounds like our snow leopard is a bit grumpy. Let's head over there and see what's wrong with her. Mm. Snow leopard. Oh here. I'm blind. Just like people, animals can suffer from stress if things aren't quite right. You oh. know, like when you see someone putting there she milk is. before the tea bag. In the case of these snow leopards, they're a bit stressed by their lack of privacy. You can lower their stress levels by swapping out the normal glass barrier by their cave for one-way glass. It's not a cheap option, but I think they're worth the expense, don't you? This will give the snow leopards somewhere to go when they want to get away from the prying eyes of the guests. Can't I just change it here? Mm. No. Of course, when an animal there isn't we go. in its natural biome, it's probably going to be too hot or too cold. Unsurprisingly, for the snow leopards, it's, it's too hot, even with the terrible British weather. You should help cool it down by adding some coolers to their habitat. But let's start by opening up the temperature heat map and having a look-see at the temperature in the leopard's habitat. Mm. Yep. They be hot. <laughs> uh, say how many? As you can see, we already have one cooler in there. Let's pop some more down and get as Three. much of the habitat as chilly as we can. Okay. Luckily for us, this habitat already has One. power, but you will need to make sure of that in the future. Just so you know, if any part of a habitat is powered, then the whole habitat will be powered. Mm, can I put it inside? Yeah, there we go. Hello. You can find heat maps for all sorts of helpful things, so do be sure to explore them and make good use of them. It'll take a little while for the temperature to adjust once you've added coolers or heaters, but now we've got the coolers in, we can address the leopards' terrain welfare. You see, what the leopards really want in here is snow and rock, so let's make that happen. Where is she? Oh, there she is. Let's see, terrain. Too much long grass, too little snow. Well, that's easy. Of course, snow won't stay unless it's cold. So you can paint snow all day long, but it won't be there if you don't place coolers. That should give you a pretty good understanding of how to make animals happy. So I'd like you to go and check on all the other animals in the zoo and fix up any issues with their habitats. Oh, well. That'll increase the average welfare of the animals across the whole zoo. And that average welfare is a very important statistic. Now, to quickly see how all your animals are doing in the zoo, you should go into zoo management and then into the animals section. Ooh, zebras not be happy. Let's see. As you can see, this list shows you the animal's overall welfare. So if something's amiss, then you can quickly pop over to them using Cross. the locate button. Right. I'm off for a cup by while you make sure all the animals are well looked after. Sure, sure. And some short grass. Where's all the soil? There it is. Mm. Some 
first to get rid of all the soil. There. And now some more long grass. Okay, all the trees have to go. Yep. Sycamore maple. sure about this one well there are no beech trees in Africa so yeah uh, Marula hold on ah there are two more It's overlapping. Oh, well, bye bye. Even if it's just a little bit in the environment, they complain about it. You know how it goes. Zebra doesn't like 335. It's a bit hard to see them. They don't like the frankincense either. Hop. Stop running. So where's that peach tree? Ah. <laughs> the train. No, they like the marula, but not anything else. So where's that beech tree? Ah, there it is. those pines well they can probably live with the bracken <laughs> tough luck African grasslands uh, continent Africa well they don't want a lot Mm, that gives too much. Something nice. Here, have some flowers and that one. Now let's see, what else do they need? Enrichment. Uh, oh, it's a plain zebra. There we go. Uh, 
where can people the feeder and a roller and a scratcher not bad, not bad at all really I think already it's to say that you passed the first part of your training with flying colors there's still lots more to learn but we'll have to head to another one of Bernie's zoos for that if you want to grab your passport we'll head off shall we well that was a bit quicker than expected but okay Yes, I know that. Mm. Sounds like you've got the whole zoo purring away nicely. Well, purring, grunting, screaming, booing, <laughs> all the uh, appropriate noises. I guess I was right to hire you, huh? Just like my neighbors. <laughs> Don't tell her I told you, but Nancy wasn't sure you'd even last the morning. <laughs> so we're happy this is working out. And Nancy owes me a foxy copy. <laughs> As strange as it seems, considering we just met, when I look at you, I feel like you're the child I never had. After the one I did have. <laughs> but you see, <laughs> zookeeping's not for my daughter. Don't get me wrong. Emma absolutely loves animals. But she set her sights somewhat higher. Mm -hmm. Wants to save the entire planet. I'll just settle for saving a couple of species. Oh, and maybe having a type of frog named after me. <laughs> well, we can always call our frogs Bernie. <laughs> uh, let's see, can we just go to the next level or do we need, need to go to the main menu? Don't see an option. Yeah, sure. It's just a tutorial zoo after all. So that was the tutorial. It's a lot of yapping. So now we go to Madagascar. Start new. Yeah, medium is fine. It's a shame you can't just go to the next level because now you have to uh, load it twice. The monkey conservation. And yes, we'll be meeting Emma later. Welcome to Madagascar. It's quite the change of scenery from dreary old England, huh? <laughs> Apart from the weather, I suppose. They don't call these places rainforest for nothing. <laughs> The zoo you'll be working in is an ape sanctuary where we're doing vitally important conservation work. Not just for apes, but for all kinds of species. But apes, well, apes are some of the closest relatives to humans there are. And yet, the way the world treats them is like, well, very much like some of us treat our actual relatives. <laughs> anyway, that's why I'm determined that our operation here does some good. If we can all leave some part of the world in a better state than we found it, we'll have lived lives worth living. And speaking of states, I have a horrible feeling I left the house in a right one. <laughs> when I get back, I expect my life won't be worth living at all. <laughs> <laughs> yep, his wife is going to kill him. What do you think of Madagascar then? bit warm for my tastes to be honest anyway this is bernie's primate sanctuary it's not just primates though we've got all sorts of animals so why don't we go and have a look at some of them eh we'll start by taking a look at the red ruffed lemurs they're the ones that look like they should be in a shakespeare play <laughs> come on let's head over to them Whee. 
When you're ready, let's go and have a look see at some of our beautiful bonobos. <laughs> They're quite the characters. Bonobos. <laughs> oh dear! They uh -oh. have arrived just in time. One of the habitat's barriers has collapsed. And wouldn't you know it, one of the bonobos has made a run for it. We'll need to catch them. But before we do, we should box up the other bonobos to stop them escaping too. Select the habitat boundary to bring up the habitat information panel. Good, now mm. open the animals tab. And click on box all animals to box up the remaining oh, bonobos. Oh, there it is. Oh, there went the box. <laughs> now, we'll need a vet to recapture that escaped bonobo, but it seems our last one left to do some research in the wild. <laughs> Not an ideal situation. So, we'll need to hire a replacement, Sharpish. Go into the zoo section and then into the staff management area. Uh, a vet. You can find all of your staff in here, but there's no time to go looking at their particulars at the moment. Hire a vet. Yeah. Go fetch. Great. Now let's deal with our escapee before they can cause too much havoc. Use the animal alerts to jump the escaped bonobo. Oh, there we go. Call the vet. Oh. Oh, okay, that's a relief. <laughs> <laughs> so while the vet deals with our bonobo friend, let's go fix up their habitat so they can't escape again. Head back over there. The double-headed axe? What, for the bonobo, uh, bon bonobo, or however you pronounce it? Oh, look, look at him run. Ah, monkeys. Or, well, apes, to be fair. Uh, now where were they again? Oh, right there. Right there. As you can see, the barriers collapsed. Someone's taken their eye off the ball, obviously. Let's get yeah, this you. one replaced. <laughs> Select the barrier and then we'll edit it. Delete the broken section of barrier and replace it with a brand spanking new one. Got Bluey. Uh, and we'll probably Good. need that. Now that we've done that, we need to make sure to add climb-proof barriers to the top. That way the bonobos won't be there able to climb out. Just make sure you've got the correct piece of barrier selected when you do that. Nicely done! And I think it's high time we unbox those bonobos, wouldn't you say? Oh, the poor mites will get sad if we leave them in there for too long. <laughs> Select the habitat barrier to bring up the habitat information panel again. <laughs> oh god, Edgar! <laughs> yeah, it's true. Oh, big well, axe. It turns out that as well as the old vet leaving, the zoo's mechanics did too. We'll need to hire a couple of new ones so we can help stop any more breakouts. <laughs> you see, mechanics do all sorts of helpful things around the zoo, but one of their most important jobs is taking care of the habitat barriers. Without mechanics around to repair them, the barriers will crack, crumble and fall down. And before you know it, we'll be overrun with escaped animals. Go into the zoo section and then into the staff management area again. Oh, gosh, we have been busy, haven't we? Go 
good work there. I'm off for a cuppa. Oh, I think Bernie wants a word with you. Oh, God. Stop yapping. <laughs> oh, I hear you had a bit of an issue with an escape bonobo. The main thing is that you dealt with it swiftly. And more importantly, without the animal stealing someone's clothes, putting them on, and then walking out of the front gate. <laughs> oh, God. You see, another key responsibility for our vets is animal research. Researching animals allows vets to unlock new enrichment items, additional information for our education resources, enhanced breeding programs, and improvements to food quality. <laughs> the animal's food, not the vet's. It'll take more than a research grant to improve the staff canteen. Oh, <laughs> anyway, as you can see, burn. research is a key part of running your zoo. Monkey. In order for a vet to undertake research, they require a research center. And once again, that's something that this zoo is missing. So let's build one. I've marked out an area for you to put it. Sorry, Nancy, I was distracted. What are we doing? <laughs> oh, there we go. Research center. Oh, look, even middle of the head. probably noticed that there's already a building where I want you to build the research center. Don't worry. You see, the building that's currently there is actually a hollow shell. So we're able to place our new building inside of it. Mm. If you select the research center for placement and then hover over the shell, you'll see that it asks if you want to add the research center to the existing building. There we go. Okay, click to oh. add it to the building. Oh, but that won't place it in just yet though. First, we'll need to rotate our research center so it automatically connects to the path when we place it. Aha, that was it. Boom. Right, splendid work. Now that we have a brand spanking new research center, we can give our vets something to do in there. Oh, by the way, it's worth noting that the vets will only do research when they're not required to do any other jobs. That said, you can change what jobs a vet does via their information panel. But let's not worry about that just now. So, let's get our vet researching ring-tailed lemurs. Go into the zoo section and select vet research. Here, you can see a list of all the animals present in your zoo and also all the potential diseases that can occur. Now, drag and drop your vet onto the ring-tailed lemur to start their research. Aha. Uh -huh. Actually, thinking about it, I'm not sure we've got any education boards or speakers by the lemur's habitat. Oh dear. Let's head over there and add some, so our guests can learn all about the furry little delights. She makes them sound like a snack. Okay, there are the lemurs. First off, let's pop down two education boards. Place them on the habitat barriers at a height that guests can see, or if you like, pop them down on a stand. Can I? Where was that stand? Or are they already there? That could be it. Oh, see, there's one. And there's two. Okay, now that they've been put into position, we have to tell them what animal to display information about. Select one of the education boards to bring up its information panel. So we add the ring-tailed lemur. There we go. And from the drop-down list, select ring-tailed lemur. Although I'm sure that last part was obvious. When you link an education board or a speaker to an animal, you need to make sure that said animal is close by. If it isn't, the guests will get confused and won't learn as much. Okay. Now that we've done the education boards, let's pop down a pair of speakers. Speakers play audio to the guests so they can learn while they look at the animals. 
instead of having to go through the laborious process of reading. <laughs> oh, one thing to bear in mind is that it's important not to put the speakers too close together. If you do, the guests won't be able to understand what's being said. Tiny lemur. Fantastic. Oh, it's worth remembering that education boards and speakers both need power to work. They won't do much good without it. Ooh. True. It looks as though our vet has completed their research on ring-tailed lemurs. We'll need to collect the results. We can do that by clicking on the notification or by going back into the vet research area. I'm sorry, Leonardo. I don't speak... Is that Spanish? Well, I don't speak the language. I'm sorry. Research is cool. done. Collect your research reports. Yes, yes. Just so you know, vets will continue to research an animal even after successfully completing a research level. <laughs> I suppose when you're in the zone, you're in the zone. Well, now that we've enriched the lives of our guests, let's enrich the lives of our ring-tailed lemurs. Some animals, like lemurs, will have a climbing need. That means they have a requirement for a certain amount of climbing space. And you can fulfill that requirement by building them a climbing frame. Well, it's already Let's called a lemur climbing frame, so... Climbing space our lemur friends need, shall we? Select one of them and bring up their information panel. Can I just... There we go. Oh, that's a great climbing frame for them. They're going to absolutely love it. Do you know what would make them even happier, though? Nicer food. But that's <laughs> true of all of us, though, isn't it? You can unlock better quality food for animals through research. Luckily, we've already unlocked some for the lemurs, so all that remains is to make sure they get served it from now on. Yep. Let's already bring up done. The habitat information panel by selecting the lemur habitat. Hey, Bob. So, a new climbing frame and better food. Oh, you've really spoilt those lemurs rotten. Now, I think it's time we looked at one of the zoo's most important responsibilities. Releasing animals into the wild. You see, when we feel an animal is ready, we can release them into the wild. But what makes an animal a good candidate for release? Well, their age is an important factor. I mean, we can't release an animal that's a juvenile, just as we can't release one that's gotten too old. They'll also need to be fertile. After all, the idea is to repopulate the wild, so the best candidates will have a high fertility gene. And together, the age and fertility of a candidate will determine how many conservation credits we'll be rewarded when we release them. Now, conservation credits are vitally important. They're the lifeblood of your zoo. Because earning them allows you to adopt even more animals. <laughs> and what's more, the animals you can adopt will oh. be of a higher quality. It's a magical so, lemur. With that in mind, let's pop over to our orangutan habitat. Yes, ma'am. Oh. Yep, those are ring-tailed lemurs. And we also have the... What do you call it again? red ruffed lemur. The fun thing is you can make walkthrough, uh, so you can have the, the, the guests walk through their cages. That's pretty fun, though not here, because to adjust this, this is still tutorial, so that's going to be a mess. Uh, let's see, orangutans. There we go. Okay, I'd like you to find Agar, oh, the for both. orangutan in the habitat, and select him, please. You can either click through each orangutan in turn, or select the habitat barrier, go to the animals tab in the habitat information panel, and find him in the animals list. I think she said this name. Can I, can I watch him first? Hello. <laughs> Nap time. Okay, release him to the wild. You got it. 
Um. I know. Bye. It's sad to see him go, but he'll be happy out in the wild, and he's a wonderful candidate for release. Young, strong, and fertile. Excellent work there. You've definitely got potential, you know. <laughs> yes, yeah, I got uh, Civ Six as well. I see you've been doing some homework. Although, it hardly seems like work when you're learning about something as adorable as a ring tail. Oh, Lila. It... I imagine I'd have got much better grades at school if there'd been less algebra and more algebra. Tortoises. Ha ha ha. Oh, Bernie, you're so funny. Okay, okay. <laughs> let's go. So far, we've done a lot of work with <laughs> habitat animals. But now it's time to learn all about exhibit animals. All right. Let's build a brand new exhibit. Oh. I've marked an area for our new exhibit. How about we head over there? Perfect. The next thing to do is adopt an exhibit animal to go in there. How about a Gila monster? Open up the exhibit trading section and adopt one. I've never played Civilization either. I tried a free weekend once and yeah, because nothing told me the the controls. I just I couldn't figure it out and I pretty much gave up. So I have to learn. Let's see. Animal markets. Where are the... Oh right, here we go. Exhibit training. Adopt. Just as we do with habitat animals, we need to send the Gila monster to the exhibit. Click on the exhibit to send it there. There we go. When you send an animal to an exhibit, it'll automatically be given the correct setup. But that doesn't mean it's completely ready for them. So let's finish it off. We'll start by adding some enrichment items. Click on the exhibit to bring up its information panel. Good. Now click on the layout tab. Hold on. It's way too humid for him. We should just call him Zeus. He's also always complaining about the humidity. <laughs> okay, enrichment. Oh, well, it looks like we've only got the enrichment level one items unlocked at the moment. Never mind. Yep. Let's turn on at least one of them to the healer monster. Uh, which one? No, not that one. That means it's four. There's also an exhibit education board. Pop them down near your exhibit to teach your guests about them. Let's add one now. A board. There we go. Oh. Come on, snap. No, not like that. Usually it snaps on all right, but oh, oh, almost. Come on. Yeah, there we go. Out of sight. No, not on the floor. <laughs> Come on. This sometimes happens when you have uh, walls around your exhibit. Oh, oh, I had it. There we go. Okay. Just like the education boards and speakers we put down for the ring-tailed lemurs, you'll need to link these to the Gila monster. Go on. There we go. Lovely stuff. Now our guests can learn all about our venomous friend here. Right, now I've got a bit of a big job for you. I need you to increase the number of species in the zoo. 
you'll probably want to adopt both habitat and exhibit animals to do so, which will mean building plenty of new habitats and exhibits for them. Go on, off you pop. Hmm. I'll check in with you when you're almost done. That X works for if you want to place items very precisely, but this is, it just needs to snap to the, uh, to the environment, to the cage. So X doesn't do much. Let's see, 12 species. Okay, let's see, where can we build them? Well, down here probably. What's this? Oh, it's a hippo. So we need three more species. Mm. That's a possibility. But wait, can it be just hold on, can I adopt oh this one? There's an empty one. So we have an iguana, cockroach, and kila. There it is. So we already had a. Oh, here. Let's get a big snail. Do we have. Oh, we have lots of money. Is there a gold one? Mm. 58 longevity and 67 and this one oh no no look, look at this one and a female because we don't want to get him lonely no Oh, here we go. Uh. <laughs> Osaka, yeah, he's alive, but unfortunately, um, they have to have two people at the office at all times. And what's happened is people have been. Uh, <laughs> at the boss and saying, well, we can't come in, you know, uh, and now he has to go to the office to work there. Now, why can't I find, so he's just up very early in the morning. Now, why aren't the snails in the storage? Oh, right. Wrong storage. Sorry. I'm an idiot. There we go. So, did that count? It did! Nice! Hmm. 
kind of bitless, humidity. <laughs> but anyway, oh, hold on. Let's move the cat. Come on. Go on the. Yeah. Good boy. So, uh, it, because he has to work on days he actually shouldn't have to work just to fill up the spots he should be off a couple of days if it, if at all possible so i hope we can game some then maybe some daisy free weekend or some more conan oh that's too far there perfect nope one nope I, I really like those 3D faca facades. Facades, probably. What's in here? A burning cockroach. It's a giant snail. Ta -da! Now I'm just going to add, I think I can, if I can, add two more exhibits. Because that means we can continue to the next level. Gila we have. Goliath frog we don't have. And a male. And we had an iguana. Uh oh. Nope. So we need at least one non exhibit animal. It's under facilities. Come on. There. Let's see. Where should we place you? What's a good spot? I think here for the animals. So if we place... Really? Can't you? There we go. No? Nope. Can I place you? No. Okay. Sometimes this game has issues. It should be possible to just... Already two there. <laughs> it's all built full. Now that's the entrance.
Now I can't find the spot I was at earlier. Because it should be possible to simply place it here. I don't get why not. Why can't I build there? Tell me why. Ah, they placed special round pathing. That's probably why. What if I move this annoying thing? See, I don't want to build a whole new path section just to build this thing for the frogs. Why is it obstructed? Can I put it in there? Yes, I can. Problem solved. Exit. Where are my froggies? Ta-da! Now let's make sure they don't die. This one can have 2D and this one 3D. There. Okay. Now we need one more species. Yes. And we can't have any more. Exhibit, so let's see. They have an orangutans, hippos, mandrills, lemurs, and lemurs. Okay. Hippos. Okay, well seems like tapirs are the yeah they're literally the only option oh wait do we have shims yeah but we don't want to spend that much oh and this one Tap here. Oh, they barely need any fencing at all. And they need water. Okay. Barriers. Well, not much choice there, do I? Okay. Let's see. But this is a staff pathing. Mm -hmm. They need water. So we need to add a bit of swim.
Oh, right, that was it. I need to add the plus. Make sure they have enough water space. That's not the wooden logs. <laughs> oh well. No matter. Well, now they changed the wooden logs. Okay. And the gate. This is all. They only need it one meter high, so this is a bit much. Just make sure not to get the hippo. We can always, uh, if necessary, you can always add a path from here to here, so people can see them. Oop. Yes. Oh. Research. Research some frogs. Let's see, habitat. Filters, we need the bird tap here. Hmm. We need food. And they can have a forage box. And, uh, where's the water? Oh, that's small. Well, they have water there, of course, but let's give them some more just to make sure. Ah, here they come. And some more enrichment. And a sprinkler or two. Nice. My, you have been busy, haven't you? Splendid! But now that you've adopted all these lovely new species, we need to make sure they're nice and happy. So, let's get the average welfare across the zoo nice and high, shall we? And by we, I mean you. Go on, get to it! Okay, let's see. Pause it for a moment. What do you need? A shelter. Makes sense. Mm. Yeah, do a nice wooden one. All the way up here. Really? That's not enough? Okay. Is this a bigger one then? Ah, there we go. They need a bigger one. There. Some bedding. And we need to move the sprinkler. <laughs> And 
they're tropical, so they'll probably need some more. Well, the terrain is fine. And they have more than enough water. So they need plants. Uh, let's see. Continent America. Grass temperate. Grass temperate and tropical. And they need a lot of it, so let's go. Let's see. We have a nice broken tree over there. <laughs> yeah, that, that's not very useful. Can we remove the DLC? Yes, we can. Nice. Okay. We need some big trees. Do I have anything bigger? There we go. Tamarind and this tamarind. And some Swiss cheese, because <laughs> you know, why not? Colorful, and we can add some reeds to the water. Oh, oh, oh! That's right. They don't, don't they snap? Align to surface. No? No. There. Perfect. All oh right, I forgot. <laughs> I should have just replaced the other one. Uh, this way. Oh. Yeah, let, let's not put it in the tree. Need anything else? The uh, milk quality is always a bit low if there's no research on it. Okay, the final mission of this map is overall welfare. So we'll have to check on all the animals' welfare. The hippos are very unhappy. Why? You know, sometimes they just get stuck, or... Uh oh, they don't have enough... Uh-oh. Really? But there's swimming space right here. Can we add a bit over here? It's really hard to see in this rain. They should have more than enough swimming space. I don't know what... Uh, let's see. Well, the fence is here. Can we move it? Pass. First we box the animals, because otherwise we get complaints. No, I don't want the whole... Let's 
very hard to see. Can I just remove? No. Ah, there we go. Okay. So we're making more room because they need more swimming room apparently. And of course, I just added the tapirs, tapirs, sorry, to the other side. The nice thing about this game is you can also work with no barriers, which means that you order the game to acknowledge a piece of wall as a or a, a piece of rock or a cave or anything like that as a wall, which is really handy. But I'm not using it in this case because I just need to get them a bit happier. So we can get to the next map. But I'll use it in the future. Uh, let's see. Well. The boxing wasn't really necessary. But otherwise you get all these. Complaints and screaming people. Still not enough. It did help a little, but not enough. That's really odd. Is this in the way? What if we move it? There. Can we make more water? Oh no, it just took a moment. Or the boat helped, I don't want. There we go. Now what's wrong with the social group? There, social. Oh, of course. Hippos live in ginormous groups. It's just, sometimes this game is just common sense. Hey Sim, thanks for stopping by. This game is so much fun. And it's just, that this is the tutorial. The, the really beautiful maps come later. Oh, although I have to say this one is uh, quite pretty. Except, you know, it's raining. I have enough rain <laughs> in real life. Just stop already. Uh, okay, what do we have? How many do we have at the moment? A male and a female. Let's see, what does the Zoopedia say? You actually have to read the Zoopedia. Because otherwise you just... So it's one male. That's important. One male up to 29 females. So we need to add a couple of females. Let's... Do they have any? Yes, they do. Hmm. Let's take the two bronze ones. Hey, I thought I added two. Where'd she go? It's a bit expensive, but it works. So now the hippo should be happy because there's nothing else. Yeah, the meal quality is just a research thing. So that's not something I can fix at the moment. Or at least can I up it? No, it's already at level three. No complaining. Okay. Who else is whiny today? The bonobos, or the bonobos, or 
what do you need? Enrichment. Yes, that'll do it. Mm. Bono, 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 bono. Okay, so they have enough climbing. So we add a drum, because, you know, why not? And a ball. Oh, not in the trees. And a nice box. Oh, forage box. They'll like that. Let's see. Good spot for it. Hmm. Somewhere where it doesn't. There we go. Because if you don't place it in the right spot, it can actually drag a whole piece of earth up or down, and then, yeah, animals get stuck. It's quite annoying. Well, uh, here, have another box. Are you happy yet? No. Okay, let here have some frozen fruit. And a block of ice. Let me... Enrichment. Food enrichment. Ah, there we go. A roller feeder. That's better. And a termite mount. That's more like it. A puzzle feeder. Nice. Can we place it on here? Yes, we can. Oh. That's right, it first starts editing, then you can add it. Exit group. And a tree forger. Here you go. Toys. A mirror mobile. Lovely job there. There you we go. Be proud of yourself. Not only have you expanded the zoo and kept the animals as happy as Lanny, but you didn't bank <laughs> happy as Larry. Amazing. Let's do another map. Uh, well, I won't have to save because, you know, I've already done all these maps. <laughs> so as we go along, we'll get less and less them telling us what to do. Which is great. Because right now I just sometimes have to wait until they're done talking before we can actually do some more. Okay, what's next? Oh, the Panda Park, right. That one's great. Start new. Medium, yes. I always think that the heart... You know, if you really want a challenge, heart can be fun, but I just want to play. And not have everyone whining at me that they're not happy with their color of their fence. <laughs> Monkey23 doesn't like the entrance. Oh boy, it's so beautiful. <laughs> but I think it's fair to say that if ever there was an animal which has captured the public's imagination, it's pandas. Oh well, that's assuming you ignore cats and dogs, obviously. It'll take more than a cute bear to knock them off of the top spot. <laughs> oh, but did you know, thanks to the incredible conservation work that's being done in China and around the world, pandas are no longer endangered. <laughs> Amazing! That said, they're still considered vulnerable. So, this zoo is extraordinarily lucky and honored to be part of that conservation effort. It really speaks to our reputation. A reputation that you're going to be in charge of maintaining. Along with all the uh, general maintaining, too. I really can tell you how important the welfare of those pandas is. Oh, wait, I can. <laughs> it is vitally 
important. The eyes of the world are on you, my friend. Although, <laughs> perhaps more pressingly, the eyes of Nancy are on you too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, Nancy? Welcome ah, to there China. she is. This is Bernie's brand new panda celebration zoo. Brand so new. In fact, that it's not quite finished, but we'll deal with that later. First, let's take a tour of the zoo. Yay. What's in here? Ooh. Obviously, the giant pandas are the main attraction for this zoo, and luckily for us, we have one which was born just a few days ago. Baby! Let's go and have a look at it. Go on, don't be shy. Select the panda cub. Look at them all sitting there, isn't it? Oh, this game is so great. And click on the camera to enter animal camera mode. Oh, it's Lin Lin. Look at her. Just warm the cockles of your heart. <laughs> so cute. Did you know the giant pandas or Ailaropoda merinaluca, if we're being formal, are the only entirely herbivorous bears? They can actually eat up to 38 kilos of bamboo a day. <laughs> Not that surprising, given that they'll spend up to 14 hours a day chomping away. I don't imagine this little fluff ball has that kind of appetite yet, though. Well, he's certainly working. Oh, she, sorry. She's certainly working her way to a watermelon. Oh, no. Literally. I just got word from one of our keepers oh, no. that a sable antelope was placed into a habitat without going through quarantine first and that they're displaying signs of disease. We'll Not in my zoo. Quarantine to stop the infection from spreading to the other animals. Is it you? To do that, go to the highlighted habitat. Find the infected animal and then select them to bring up their information panel. It's not you, I think. Oh, let me remove. Yeah, Good. there we go. Now click move oh. and then transfer them into quarantine. Sorry. I've highlighted the quarantine facility in the zoo for you. Maybe he's sick? I don't see anything. Wait, how many do we have? Just one, so. Uh, wait, what are we doing? Quarantine. Okay, so where's the... There's quarantine. Phew, that's a relief. Now that we've stopped the infection from spreading any further, we need to build a vet surgery so the antelope can be treated and then return to his habitat. I've already highlighted where I'd like you to build it, so why don't we head over there? In order to build the vet surgery, click on facilities, staff facilities, and then vet surgeries. Uh, this is, wait, yeah, veterinary surgery. Where's the entrance? There we go. Yep, there's a path. The job. Vet surgeries play a very important role in a zoo, as they're the only places that vets can treat the animals. Once there's room for the antelope, the vet will pick them up from quarantine and bring them to the surgery. Uh, mm. Yes, diseases... <laughs> it's glitched to the rocks. ...quite easily. <laughs> oh especially God, if the water that. inside it isn't being cleaned regularly. Oh, well. As it happens... I just got a report that one of our water treatment facilities has broken down and the water in the flamingo and saltwater crocodile habitats has gotten dirty. I've highlighted the water treatment facility oh. for you, so you should go and check it out.
Yes, here we are. I don't see anything wrong with it. Did I click it too early? Click on the water treatment facility to bring up its information panel. Ah, there we go. So, mechanic is en route. Here he comes. Good work. Now Yay. that the water treatment facility has been repaired, the water will be cleaned up in two shakes of a lamb's tail. You can also use mechanics to repair power facilities, transport drives, bins, benches, signs, and, as you already know, habitat barriers. Now, I'll be honest, I'm still a little worried about that disease scare we had, so I think we should do some research into it. Doing research into a disease can help prevent future outbreaks of it, and even if we do have an outbreak, it'll make the disease much less potent. I'd like you to start some research into border telosis, Disease research can be found in vet research, so head over to your research center and get one of the vets researching it. Okay. So the thing is, as the water treatment gets damaged over time, the circle shrinks. Those... Uh, if you look here, it just barely touches the water. If it shrinks just a little bit, it won't get cleaned. So you really have to look out for that. Let's see. research. Let's remove the overlay. Vet research. Uh, all right, here we go. Lovely job. Once that research is complete, I expect we'll send that disease packing in no time. That was a close run thing with those antelopes. <laughs> I dread to think what might have happened if you hadn't got them into quarantine as quickly as you did. Fast thinking there. We had a horrible outbreak of viral gastroenteritis here at Goodwin House. Although, luckily, <laughs> that was just limited to me and my wife. <laughs> oh. Too much info, Bernie. Right. Now that we've got all our urgent tasks in hand, we can start to focus on the guests and improving their time in the park. Nah. You see, you can also <laughs> do research into new and improved guest facilities, transport right. rides, as well as new types of barrier and other things via the workshop. I've highlighted the workshop for you, so head over there, select it, and then click on View Workshop. Uh, let's see, there we go. Finally, assign a mechanic to research souvenir shops by dragging and dropping them onto it. I can't wait to see what they come up with. What else do we want? The Kobe. There. Great oh. stuff. That research will take a little while, so let's have a look at something else in the meantime. Because we've had some good news. Okay. Oh, there we go. Turns out that we're allowed to adopt more giant pandas. The authorities have given us three females to help with our breeding program. Even so, I'm sure you know how notoriously difficult it is to get pandas to breed, so we'll have to be patient. Our current giant panda habitat is full to the brim, but luckily we've already got another habitat ready to go. But be 
before we move our new pandas in, they'll need to go through quarantine. Of course, we can't do that until we've accepted them. So open up Animal Trading and go into the Animal Reward section. Way ahead of you. Let's see, where's the other panda habitat? It's a bit dark. While we wait for them to clear quarantine, you should set up their new habitat so they feel at home in there. I'll also need you to bring over oh. one of the male pandas right. from our other habitat, because without him, we're not going to have much of a breeding program, are we? <laughs> so go on, move him over and get everything set up for your pandas. Your pandas. Let's see. We have Gui, Huang, and Yusheng. Well, it's a breeding program, so let's see. Hmm. Utility 67. Fertility 100. And... Oh, he's not very... Yeah, let's uh, let's see. Cause oh right, this is the other one. You can go over here. Of course, they need everything. Oh, species giant. Where's the gate? Because while you want people to be able to see them eat, it's still handy to make sure it's not too far from the gate so the keepers can see, because this is all closed off. Ah well, he'll just have to walk a bit further. Water from a water pipe, because otherwise they'll need to fill it. Uh, well, they have shelters in here. Do they have bedding? Oh, yeah, that's dark. Can't see. Oh, there we go. That's. That's oh, yeah, the weak point of this game, the camera angles. There, that should do it. Maybe one more over there. So now they all have sleeping spots. Okay, enrichment, a box. Hmm. Obstructed by what? Ah, there we go. Wind chimes. And that we're gonna over there. It's a scatter feeder. Now where's our panda? Where where are you? Ah, there you are. Okay, let's check the terrain. It's more short grass instead of long grass. Hmm. Maybe a bit more soil. There. 
Oh, wrong button. Better food. Now where do you go? Oh, right. Yeah, that's part of the decoration. I'm not removing all of those. He likes the holly trees. Okay, needs more coverage. Temperate Asia, what a surprise! Temperate Asia. There we go. Well, he's gonna need some bamboo, won't he? You actually have to be very careful while placing trees because, you know, these aren't climbable, but bigger trees are. So if you place them right next to the fence, yeah, you're, you're going to be in trouble. And something else. Nice tree. These they can climb. And some reeds. Getting there. Do we have mysterious or wall climbers? Just some flowers. Well, this isn't very pretty, is it? I'll fix it in a second. Good news. Our new female pandas have been given a clean bill of health. You best move them into the new habitat so they can settle in. And I hope you've made their habitat as comfy as possible. Because animals will only breed if they're happy. Oh, I can't. I can't fix it. Shame. Whee. Okay, let's move them. Oh, bless. I think they'll be really happy in there. Fingers crossed we'll see some lovely new cubs sooner rather than later. Right. While they're being delivered, we'd better get on with something else. Oh, dear me. There's never any time to rest when you're running a zoo, is there? Well, unless you hit the pause button. <laughs> okay, I think it's time I told you all about work zones. I know, they don't sound as interesting as the animals, but trust me, they're ever so useful. You see... Work zones are a way of making sure that your staff concentrate on specific habitats or tasks within the zoo, so they aren't wandering off elsewhere when it's time to feed the animals or the like. So let's start by creating a new work zone and then assigning a keeper to it so that they know to look after the new pandas. To do that, Go into the zoo section, then click on staff, and then work zones. Now, click on new work zone. Let's give it a good name, otherwise you'll never find it back. To set there up your go. new work zone, I'll need you to select the highlighted habitat gate, staff room, and keeper hut. 
Oh, and don't forget to name it something useful. <laughs> Once you're done, just go ahead and exit the work zone creator. Oh, no, wait, this is a caretaker. We need a keeper. Now let's hire mm. a new keeper and yeah, assign uh, them to our new work zone. Let's. We don't want them getting distracted by other goings on in the zoo. Go on, hire one. There we go. Get to work. There you go. Now your keeper will focus his attention on our new pandas. Oh, and just so you know, all types of staff can be assigned work zones. Just make sure that they have access to all the buildings that they need. And one last thing, you might find it faster to assign them from the work zones tab in the staff section of Zoom Management. That'll save you having to chase around selecting your staff one by one. <laughs> True. Oh, it sounds like the brand research has been completed. What a you surprise. Your rewards. And you can do that by clicking on the notification or by going back into mechanic research. Now that we've got our lovely new Just a Memento shop designed, you should build one of them near the zoo's exit. That way the guests won't miss it on their way out and we won't miss out on their money. <laughs> money! <laughs> Hello Mr. Pikachu! Welcome. Ah, here it is. So, we need a shop. Let's not have it glitch through things. Stop turning red. Oh, right. I need to make. Okay, hold on. So, what's the problem here? Oh, it's. It's hilly. This way. Can we do it this way? Nope. Oh, come on. What the hell's the problem? Can't I place this? Ah, uh, there we go. Oh, that's ever so wonderful, that is. So it's anyway, just the error in the terrain. But I'm sure I'll have some more jobs for you to look at shortly. Eighteen species. We have fifteen. Oh, those pandas look just adorable. <laughs> I can see why people keep foolishly forgetting that they're wild bears. And good work on that new gift shop branding. Just a memento. <laughs> Very clever. Much yes, better thank than you. our old overpriced gifts branding. <laughs> I'm all for <laughs> truth in advertising, but it was perhaps a little. <laughs> On the nose. <laughs> oh. Okay, let's see. I'm just making sure the welfare of all the other animals are uh, up. As promised. Oh. Right. I'd like you to increase me alone. the number of different species in the zoo. Now, you can find out what species are already in your zoo by going into the zoo section and then into the animals area. And if you're wondering how you're going to fit them all in, 
Then mixed species habitats are a great way to save space and create interesting habitats. Just make sure to check the Zoopedia to find out which species enjoy living together. E.g. don't mix lions with antelopes. Why not? They love each other. <laughs> Be great. Okay. You guys happy yet? Yep. Okay, so we need a few more species. Let's see what we have. Uh, let's see. Pangolins. Bear tapir. Well, let's see. Exhibits are, of course, a very easy way to add a couple of species. So we can start with that. Rattlesnake, poison frog, snail, and scorpion. Bob's gonna gamble it all. <laughs> okay, let's see. Are there any exhibits? Facilities. Hmm. Where was it under again? Doesn't look like it. Well, it's a good spot. No, too hilly. Yeah, we can make it a big one. Oh no, that's four. That's too big. Now we need to move the benches. So we have a rattlesnake, poison frog, snail, and scorpion. Hmm. Well, they only have females. Uh, did we have a constrictor? Let's take the ones that don't need the conservation points, because we could use them for something else. Um. More snakes. Hmm. And a male. 
Sure. And the eastern brown over there. Did that count? Yes, it did. It's a bit of a cheat, but at least we can go on to another level. Let's see, it's way too cold. And they need more humidity. Twenty-five then. There we go. A bit more humidity. And this one. About the same, I think. Okay, which one is the back window? Always the last one. Of course, the side window as well. Is that three? No, it's one. There. Do we have staff room and a keeper hut? Okay, nice. Uh, let's see. Work zone. Work zone. X bits. Enter. And we need to hire a keeper. And you're gonna do this. Happy. Nope. The thing is, they can live together with the Barrett Stab here. Because I played Sutakun too, and I tried it out, and it does work. It just doesn't give them anything extra. Let's see. Well, no, th there's nothing that can live together with the Garials. here it's a red panda I'm just looking if there's a species in the zoo already that can live together with another species because I think the sable antelope should be able to Yes, he can. Quite a lot. Of course, the entire savanna can fit into that. Uh. Okay, let's find some. Let's see. No, not a pronghorn.
the warthog could work. That one is expired. Wildebeest. I think the Warthog should work as well. Yeah, let's take the tiny one. But first he needs quarantine. Because otherwise they'll get sick and it's just annoying. Research all done. More souvenir shops. And... Nice. Okay, what do we need? This new snakes. Need some more research. Mechanical. Hmm. Our whole team will take too long. That won't work right now. A food shop. I wonder if it's big enough. Oh, here's a good example for, of a null barrier. See, the, the ground is just high enough. They made it a null barrier. But you can check if they can escape. Let's see. Here, see the climbable escape point. There shouldn't be anything. Ah, quarantine's done. Uh, now where? Oh, here. Nice. Too much coverage. Okay. There, how's that? Yep, much better. Rain's good. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. sure you'll know by now how to make your animals happy. So you'd best get that sorted before the inspector gets here. Sorry, did I not mention there was an inspector coming? <laughs> no. Oh dear. Looks like you've got everything humming away nicely. Well done. Oh, well, Maybe. that was quick. It seems that with our new pandas and other species, we've attracted lots and lots of new guests. Let's work on making sure those guests are kept happy. That means making sure they have great views of the animals, lots of places to buy food and drink, and, well, lots of places to get rid of food and drink. <laughs> Toilets. You should think carefully about where to put your guest facilities, though. For instance, don't put all of the food shops in the same place. Just look at how the guests are distributed around the park and put your facilities where they'll be needed the most. As long as you remember to pay attention to what the guests are thinking, you'll soon have a handle on what everyone wants. Yeah. 
let's just make sure these two have everything they need. I think they can all use one food. Enrichment is already good. He needs enrichment. And you are called a common warthog. And uh, here, a sprinkler. And sure, the warthog needs some wind chimes. <laughs> Go ahead. And a nice box. Okay, what's the problem? Of oh, food enrichment. Okay. Ah, we don't have those. No, that's just food and water. Here. Here, this one. There we go. Much better. Chief beef, milkshakes, information. Okay, well, where do we have? Okay. Oh, they're really unhappy. Why? Oh, it's raining. <laughs> Well, that's not my fault. You forgot your umbrella. Not really one spot, right? Okay, this overlay is annoying. Let's see. They have balloons. Well, here is enough food and drink. So where is there not? Over here. So that leaves here. Where's the road? There's the road. Mm. There's already some over there, so... Mm. And another one. Oh. Okay, and another one for the... Le Toilette. And the... Uh, information and you can go over there and you're good okay facilities we needed a chief beef turn please now the hard part getting it inside Come on, come on, you can do it. Yeah. Mm. It's a bit too high, but it'll work. Okay, milkshakes. I need an information. Oh. Can't I undo that? No. I was in the wrong editing menu. It needs to be in this one. 
Each building can be edited separately. Oh. Really? Don't do that. <laughs> There's no need to dig a hole. Okay, what else do we need? A toilet block. Can we... Yep, we can. What's this? A plaster wall. So what we need is a plaster wall with a walkthrough possibility. Walls. This one? Yeah. There, that's better. Facilities. And a toilet. Uh, can they go in there? I'm sure they'll be fine. Okay, five benches and five. One, two, three. There are all the benches over there. That's slope for five and bins. Well, they have a lot of bins in this park. Well, one over there. Here, um, nope. A bin every meter, A bin for every person. Oh, my goodness, so many bins. Oh, sounds like the inspector's almost here. Now, I fully expect you to pass with flying colors. Anything less, and I might have to organize a little job exchange scheme for you with whoever's mucking out the pandas. <laughs> Two and a half stars. Okay. I don't think we can turn off the nights, can we? Oh, yes, we can. There we go. Much better. Mm. Right. And the animals needed some info. Where did we put them? Exhibits. There you are. Here, you can place some info boxes here. One for the wildebeest and one for the warthog. And some 
Oh wait, there are already speakers. So where's the other one? Ah, over here. Well, we can just change that one. Any more? Oh, come on. It's still dark. Why? It worked earlier. Eh. Hmm. Look, there's the inspector. Yeah, that's going to take a while. <laughs> Speed up. And let's check on the animals. Everybody happy? some food enrichment. Oh, Capi. Mm -hmm. There, that's better. Hold on, did I put all the vets on research? Yeah. Oh. Yes, I did. That's not smart. Let's hide another one. There, that should fix it. You always need to leave at least one mechanic and one vet free to attend to everything. Otherwise, your whole park is going to go up in flames. Speaking of, we need another mechanic for such a big park. How many? Oh, we have more than enough caretakers. That should do it. Why are you unhappy? Alright, I did do some research on them, so I should be able to add more to the exhibit. see can you actually see it oh yes you can ha huh. so you actually only need to add one but I like to add all of them it just looks pretty uh, anything else we can change nope and this one... There. That should help. <laughs> okay, sometimes you just randomly get visitors. Edgar, you're in my zoo. That's probably you. Let's see if you're happy. Yep, there you are. Waiting for the ADM. 
which probably means we need to add more ADMs. Mm, guess here, monies. And Derby. <laughs> so funny. All right. Uber speed. Because we're waiting for the report. Call the vet. There, let's put that new vet to work. Do your job. What did we get? What did we get? Mm. Food. Pizza pen. There we go. I really can't believe just how much you've come on during our time together. <laughs> it goes to show, Bernie's got a keen eye for talent. Oh, and speaking of Bernie, he's not finished with you yet. He's got a new job for you in Canada. I Ooh. get the feeling that you'd best pack a warm coat. Oh, listen, it's been wonderful getting to know you, and I'm sure we'll meet again. But in the meantime, good luck. Well, that was a almost three hour long tutorial <laughs> that tells you enough about how complicated this game is because I've been we, told that there were oh, smiles on the faces of yet. all of the guests. And that's a real testament to the hard work. Yeah, even Edgar. And if anything, I hear the animals look even happier. <laughs> Although, in all honesty, it's, it's hard to tell with the pandas. They're so uh, <laughs> enigmatic. I'm told that Lin Lin's quite the character, though. Oh, oh, she's really been a hit with the visitors. You could even say the business is bam booming. Oh, pun. <laughs> and, fingers crossed, we might even be able to feature pandas at some of my other zoos, now that you've shown everyone we know how to cater for their welfare. I shouldn't be surprised, though. After all, you've become a very capable trainee zoo manager. I suspect... There isn't a single task I could throw at you which you wouldn't handle with a plum. That said, I think the next one's gonna be a bit of a curveball. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, <laughs> it's your avatar from Planet Coaster. <laughs> it's probably... Uh used uh, because it's of course obviously of the same makers so since i already know that the next map is gonna be a long one i'm gonna end it here today so thanks so much for watching guys i've had a great time and uh, let's end it with little lin lin <laughs> and mommy hi mommy yeah good mommy oh ain't she cute there she goes <laughs> Okay, good night everyone.